Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa. I am so glad you are here to learn more about your health and how your body works. If you want to continue to learn more about your health, please make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. In today's video, we are going to take a look at the different parts of the eukaryotic cell. So eukaryotic cells are more complex than prokaryotic cells. Their DNA is found in the nucleus, which is a bound membrane. They also have membrane-bound organelles, many of them. We will be talking about each one and what they do throughout the rest of this lecture. The cytoplasm is found in the region between the plasma membrane and the nucleus. Eukaryotic cells are larger than prokaryotic cells. Proteists, fungi, animals, and plants all consist of eukaryotic cells. In this figure, you can see an example of a eukaryotic cell. You can notice that there is a nucleus, and within the nucleus is where you would find the DNA. So the DNA is therefore membrane-bound with this nucleus. There are also several organelles within the eukaryotic cell, making the eukaryotic cell a much more complex cell. In the next slides, we are going to start talking about all the components that make up this eukaryotic cell. First, let's go ahead and talk about the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane is a selective barrier that allows sufficient passage of oxygen, nutrients, and waste to service the volume of every cell. Therefore, the plasma membrane allows things to go in and out of the cell. The plasma membrane is a selective barrier, or we can say that the plasma membrane is selectively permeable. It only allows certain things in and out of the cell. The membrane consists of a phospholipid bilayer. These phospholipid bilayers, which you see here, two layers of phospholipids on the top and on the bottom, consist of a head. The head of the phospholipid is water-loving, they are hydrophilic and can dissolve in water, which is why they are on the outside of the cell, and then they would be also facing the inside of the cell, both sides where water would be. Facing towards the inside of the phospholipid bilayer are the tail regions. The tail regions are the hydrophobic ends, which means they are afraid of water. These portions include two nonpolar fatty acids. The nucleus of the cell is information central. This organelle is the largest and most easily seen, usually in the center of the cell, though its location can vary. Within the nucleus, we will find that stored genetic material, or the DNA. Chromatin is the name given to DNA that is organized with proteins. They are stringy structures and it condenses to form chromosomes during cell division. The nucleus is surrounded by a nuclear envelope. The nuclear envelope itself is also composed of a two phospholipid bilayer, just like we saw in the cell membrane. The envelope has nuclear pores. These nuclear pores allow proteins to move into the nucleus, and RNA can move out of the nucleus to the cytoplasm. The nucleolus is located within the nucleus and is the site of ribosomal RNA or rRNA synthesis. Ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis. We find ribosomes within the cytoplasm of the cell. You can see that ribosomes are in two different places. One attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, where you'll see the studded appearance of the endoplasmic reticulum. The other place you'll see ribosomes are just within the cytoplasm themselves. Those uh, ribosomes that are just within the cytoplasm itself are referred to as free ribosomes. So we can have free ribosomes within the cytoplasm as well as uh, ribosomes that are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. These ribosomes are composed of ribosomal RNA, again, rRNA, and proteins. The endomembrane system is responsible for regulating protein traffic and performing metabolic function within the cell. The endomembrane system consists of the nuclear envelope, 
the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, vacuoles, and the plasma membrane. These components are either continuous or connected via transfer by vesicles. Let's take a closer look at the rough endoplasmic reticulum. I had just mentioned the rough ER as it is studded with ribosomes. Remember, ribosomes are the sites of protein synthesis. Once these proteins are synthesized on ribosomes that are attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, they are exported from the cell, sent to lysosomes, or even the plasma membrane. Let's talk about the smooth ER. The smooth ER is attached to the rough ER. Uh, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is given its name because there are relatively few ribosomes attached to it, giving it a smooth appearance compared to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The smooth ER has several functions and includes things such as providing a site for the synthesis of membrane lipids, it is also um, acts as a calcium storage in some cells. It can detoxify foreign substances such as alcohol, drugs, etc. Um, one of the things that you'll notice as we talk about these different organelles, all cells have all of these organelles that we're going to be talking about. However, specialized cells have more of some organelles than others depending on their specialty. Since the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, uh, one of its functions is, is to detoxify, we'll see a lot of smooth ER in liver cells because liver cells, one of their responsibilities is to detoxify substances. So we'll see a lot of smooth endoplasmic reticulum there. So some cells have more of some organelles than others depending on their specialties. And finally, the smooth ER also can metabolize carbohydrates. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus looks like a flattened stack of pancakes. It is often confused with the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum, which we just talked about before, is always attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So that is kind of one of the giveaways. The other thing is that the um, Golgi apparatus kind of has this appearance, if you'll look, it looks like one stack on top of the other, whereas the smooth endoplasmic reticulum that we just looked at that you can kind of see back here has a more maze appearance rather than a very nice flattened stack appearance. Uh, the Golgi apparatus jobs are to modify products from the endoplasmic reticulum. It packages and distributes the materials to different parts of the cell, and it can also manufacture certain macromolecules. Lysosomes are membrane-bound vesicles that contain digestive enzymes that are used to break down macromolecules. Lysosomes are formed within the cell and packaged by the Golgi apparatus. So these digestive enzymes or proteins were made in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. They went to the Golgi apparatus and then they are packaged in these vesicles that sit within the cell to be used when needed. They are also capable of destroying cells or foreign matter that the cell has engulfed in phagocytosis. So certain white blood cells that, are, um, that do phagocytosis, such as a macrophage, would have a lot more lysosomes uh, than other cells. Vacuoles are large vesicles that are derived from the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus. There are three different types of vacuoles. There is the central vacuole that is seen in plant cells. This fills a large part of the plant cell, maintains water balance, stores pigments, ions, sugars, and waste products for the plant. Vacuoles that are most often found in animal cells are used for transporting food, water, and waste products. Food vacuoles can be formed by phagocytosis. Mitochondria are organelles that are present in all types of eukaryotic cells. They are the sites of cellular respiration, which is a metabolic process that uses oxygen to generate ATP. They have a smooth outer membrane and an inner membrane that is folded into cristae. The inner membrane creates two components, an intermembrane space 
and the mitochondrial matrix. Some metabolic steps of cellular respiration are catalyzed in the mitochondrial matrix. Cristae present a large surface area for enzymes that synthesize ATP. Mitochondria are also a unique organelle as they contain their own DNA. Chloroplasts are organelles that are present in cells of plants and some bacteria and cyanobacteria. These are the sites of photosynthesis. Chloroplasts contain green pigment chlorophyll, as well as enzymes and other molecules that function in photosynthesis. Chloroplasts are found in leaves and other green organs of plants and in algae. The chloroplast has three parts, the thylakoid membrane, these are areas of concentrated chlorophyll. The grana, these are stacks of coin-shaped thylakoids. And finally, the stroma, which is the fluid-filled spaces of enzymes in between grana. Mitochondria and chloroplasts both generate ATP. Peroxisomes are specialized metabolic compartments bounded by a single membrane. They break down hydrogen peroxide and convert it into water. Peroxisomes perform reactions with many different functions. Some peroxisomes can use oxygen to break fatty acids down into smaller molecules, while peroxisomes in the liver detoxify alcohol and other harmful compounds by transferring hydrogen from the poisonous compounds to oxygen. The cytoskeleton of the cell is a network of fibers extending throughout the cytoplasm. It organizes the cell's structures and activities, anchoring many organelles to the cell itself. It is composed of three types of molecular structures, microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. The role of the cytoskeleton is to support the cell and also for motility in those cells that are able to be mobile. This table shows the difference between microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. If you want to go ahead and pause the video here to look at it in more detail, you can. I'm gonna briefly talk about each one. Microtubules are responsible for facilitating cell movement. They organize the cytoplasm and move materials within the cell. They are the thickest of all the tubules. They are also involved in maintaining the cell shape. Microfilaments or actin filaments are responsible for cellular contractions and pinching during division. They also help in the maintenance of cell shape and work in muscle contraction. These filaments are the thinnest of all the filaments. And finally are the intermediate filaments. Again, these work in maintenance of cell shape and they provide structural stability. The centrosomes and centrioles are present in most animal cells and proteases, but not plant cells. In animal cells, microtubules grow out from a centrosome near the nucleus and it's used in cell division. The centrosome consists of both centrioles at a 90 degree angle. The centrosome has a pair of centrioles each with nine triplets of microtubules arranged in a ring. Cell movement can take different forms. Crawling is accomplished via actin filaments and the protein myosin. Flagella undulate to move a cell. Cilia can be arranged in rows on a surface uh, of a eukaryotic cell to propel a cell forward. The cilia and flagella of eukaryotic cells have a similar structure. They have nine pairs of microtubules surrounded by two central microtubules. This is a nine to two structure. Cilia are usually more numerous than flagella on a cell. Here's an example of what um, a flagella looks like versus what cilia look like. The cell wall of plants is an extracellular structure that distinguishes plant cells from animal cells. Prokaryotes, fungi, and some unicellular eukaryotes have cell walls. 
The cell wall protects the plant, maintains its shape, and prevents excessive uptake of water. Plant cells are made of cellulose fibers embedded in other polysaccharides and protein. Plant cell walls have multiple layers. The primary cell wall is relatively thin and flexible. The middle lamella is a thin layer between the primary walls of adjacent cells. And the secondary cell wall in some cells is added between the plasma membrane and the primary cell wall. In a plant cell, the cell wall would be on the outside and the plasma membrane would be on the inside of that cell wall. So the cell wall adds another layer of protection for the plant cell itself. Animal cells lack cell walls, but are covered by an elaborate extracellular matrix or ECM. The extracellular matrix is made up of glycoproteins such as collagen, proteoglycans, and fibronectin. The extracellular matrix proteins bind to receptor proteins in the plasma membrane called integrins. The extracellular matrix has an influential role in the lives of cells. They can regulate a cell's behavior by communicating with a cell through integrins. There are three types of cell junctions that are common in epithelial tissues. At tight junctions, which you see here, the membranes of neighboring cells are pressed together, preventing leakage of extracellular fluid. So they are very tightly held together here. In desmosomes or anchoring junctions, which you see here, these fasten the cells together into strong sheets. Again, remember that these junctions are cell to cell junctions. So plasma membrane to plasma membrane. And finally, gap junctions, seen here, provide cytoplasmic channels between adjacent cells. So these are actually acting as channels. This concludes my lecture on Chapter 6, A Tour of the Cell. I do hope that this helped you to understand the different concepts in this chapter. If you have any questions about this, please don't hesitate to write them in the comments below. If you like this video and its content, I please ask that you subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. Thank you. I hope that this video helped you to better understand eukaryotic cells and the different parts that they're made of. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them down in the comment box below. As always, if you like this video and enjoy my content, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button so that you never miss out on a new video. Thank you.